Welcome to Skift Global Forum East. Please join us in welcoming on stage His Excellency Hilal Saeed Almari, Director General, Dubai's Department of Economy and Tourism, and Rafat Ali, CEO and founder, Skift. Your Excellency, welcome to Skiff Global Forum East. Thank you for your time. Thank you for doing this for us. And uh, we've had, over the last day and a half, uh, a lot of discussion on the future of travel, Dubai's role in it, Dubai's, uh, in many ways, leading the recovery um, coming out of the pandemic and setting a template for, uh, for the world. Um, you are in charge of only the two most important parts of Dubai, which is economy and tourism, happens to be the, the biggest engine that drives uh, Dubai. Um, from your perspective, um, what, how do you envision the future of tourism mixed with commerce for Dubai? And then we'll get into some of the details as well. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, I'd like to welcome everyone, especially those visiting from abroad. Um, I, I have the after lunch slot, so I hope I hope everyone can stay awake. Um, uh, f first we'll of all, sure. you, you know, maybe maybe what I would focus on is when you gave the introduction to me, you mentioned economy and tourism, and uh, I think it, it's all underpinned. You know, why are we so successful uh, in? Uh, tourism, but also in driving the economy. It's all underpinned by some of the basics that we all know. You know, people really today, especially after COVID, they look and see, you know, uh, they look at security, they look at healthcare, they look at, um, you know, the, the soft and hard infrastructure that is available in a place. And, you know, as you know from all the global rankings in things like security and others, the UAE and Dubai and Abu Dhabi come you know, in the top of, of those tables. And, and many of us take it for granted, but I think um, in today's uh, ever-developing world, um, you know, with all of the, um, uh, if you like, regular black swan events that we keep seeing, uh, it becomes more and more important to people. Um, the other thing is Dubai has obsessed for a very long time about the happiness of the people, both from here and residing here, and really tried to put in place very clear, very numbers-driven plans on how this city can become the best place to live and work. Right. Now, of course, if you think as a family unit, what makes the city the best place to live and work? It really means that you, know, you want to have a level of satisfaction and enjoyment, and you want to make sure that you know, every weekend or every spare moment you have, you feel like you're on holiday, right? And you get, um, and, and seeing so many people from around the world moving here through COVID mm -hmm. and since COVID, uh, you know, we, we've heard many of the stories about, about how they've, um, you know, how they've interacted with the city. For us who have been in the city for many years, it's a little difficult to see the change or it's a little difficult to see the progress because you take everything for granted. Uh, you know, everything's on, on your fingertips on the phone. Uh, there's no bureaucracy. Um, you always have something very enjoyable, very authentic uh, to do and engage with, uh, whether it's, um, uh, you know, whether it's on a weekday, you know, between meetings after work, before work, or it's at a weekend. And, um, uh, you know, we, we, I think we're blessed um, uh, to have a leadership that really looks very carefully at the people and what they need. And the decision making is made based on what's good for Dubai, what's good for the people here, um, socially, economically. There's no politics. Uh, there's no ulterior motives. Uh, it's all done, uh, you know, in a very sort of somewhat easy way. Um, and I think that's why, um, you know, that's how the commerce and the tourism come together. Because if my kids tell me they don't want to go on holiday during this break, they, they want to stay here, um, you know, then, uh, and all the other kids from around the world want to come here as well, then, you know, I know we're in a good place. Why is, um, it, Dubai is, and, I, and I've been coming here, we talked a little bit before, I've been coming here for 20, 25 years, I was here before the Burj was here uh, as well. Um, 
what I've seen is Dubai is very obsessed with efficiency. Starts at the airport, you enter, it's very quick, everything is, is taken care of. Um, from, a, from a business perspective, efficiency is, is, it looks like one of the biggest driving forces for you to remove friction for people who are visiting, for people who are doing business, for people who are living, for people who need to interact with the government. So that has been an, an obsession um, in a good way, I guess. Look, I think um, uh, like, a, like an organization, you have a corporate culture. You know, effectively, you know, you have a culture in the city which is around hospitality and efficiency. And I think it's a cultural thing that makes that happen. You know, when it, and again, it starts at the top. You know, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, you'll see him visiting the airport, visiting some of the major, um, uh, you know, places where you would, one would think there might be some bottlenecks or one would think there might be a lack of efficiency. And, and you see him personally checking on those things. And that's something from 20, 30 years ago. That's not something from today. Right. That permeates down and has become a way of living. You know, today, you know, you, you'll find, you know, very few people in the hotels here, uh, you know, talking about how well they're doing. You know, I remember when we did the tourism strategy in 2013 and we sat with all the people in the industry uh, and everybody was talking about like 93, 96, 97 percent, you know, satisfaction at 100 percent, you know, all these numbers. And then, you know, one of the one of the GMs of one of the famous hotels here, he said, we need to forget all of that and we need to focus on the two and three percent. Mm. And those two and three percent, we need to we need to make them points of positive surprise and uh, points of, surprise. of surprise. And I remember uh, also, you know, over the years we had things go viral on social media like hotels noticing that the toiletries of some of their VIP guests were close to finishing and bringing the exact same brand, putting it there. And these small touches you see across the city um, and, you know, the level of care taken by everybody from a CEO down to a concierge down to somebody working in a, in a, in a, in a shop. You know, um, th I think that's what really um, defines uh, the city. You know, as well as that, of course, the team use, you know, the, the digital infrastructure we have to monitor all these things. Right. And, um, you know, we have people in the team, you know, uh, who obsess over the numbers. And, uh, you know, if the numbers aren't good for whatever reason in terms of efficiency, in terms of uh, satisfaction, or you, we see them shaking, uh, you know, th that, that, that information is transparently available to all of the stakeholders within the particular sector or industry or whatever else. And, um, you know, we've set up, um, uh, you know, um, uh, we've set up an entity for consumer protection and uh, fair trade, and, and they play a big, big role at the other end of the spectrum where there are problems. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that, you know, having people on the ground, um, you know, 24-7, uh, getting a feel for these things and making sure that uh, everything is, is at the standard it should be across the whole city. Um, I think that's key. And, right. people, and you know, the, the Medjidless system, which Dubai is, you know, brought up on, which is the open Medjidless, which is like the open city room where people can speak to the leadership, that's moved on to social. And today, you know, you know, if somebody gets a bad service somewhere, they'll jump onto social, right. you know, whatever it is. And that's become something very accepted here. And it's become something that people react past to. They see it as a challenge. I'm going to fix it. And I think the very positive mindset, um, you know, it, it, it permeates through the city. And I think that, um, I think that's what drives, you know, from all the people in this room and all the people working in all the different uh, industries and especially the hospitality industry, you could see how they're, um, you know, really driving that agenda forward. Right. And um, I think your Highness just announced um, the, the 20 minute city, this is the 2040 vision that, that you have. I read, I think a few days ago, you, um, was announced. Uh, and the, and the concept of the 20 minute city is, uh, and this is the city master plan is to divide the city into five regions, or at least from a organizational perspective and make sure each of these are self-sufficient, uh, places where people who live or who come to come as a tourist have everything within 20 minute walking distance or a bike ride. That's what I read. 
Yeah, I think I think I think there's a I think I think I think um, your question simplified something which is obviously quite complex. So, the, you know, His Highness um, announced some time ago a 2040 master plan, and what you're seeing now is different elements of that master plan, you know, being announced in the in the final project form. Uh, you know, specifically Dubai has you know five areas to the city. The newest one being the Expo area, and uh, you know Marina is one. Uh, Jumeir, you know, th this area is another, and 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 those areas. Um, uh, a number of them today have all of the amenities you could imagine. You know, everything from shopping to healthcare to everything you could imagine. What, 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 is, what is really being looked at, again, very systematically is, is there anything missing from these? Of course, people will still commute from one area in the city to the other. They want to go to their favorite restaurant or whatever else. But what we want to make sure is that there's not an unnecessary commute. You know, there's not an, that any anything you need, uh, you know, is there at your fingertips again, um, and 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 we see that um, we we already see it working in many of these urban centres, and we also see from a tourism perspective, um, you know, we you know, you may know that we have one of the highest repeat visitations in the world, and what's interesting is that you see uh, different tourists finding different parts of Dubai and finding their own story. Right. And, uh, and, and you find them coming back time and again and living that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite good because today when I, when I meet, you know, people coming here and, I, I, and they obviously ask me for recommendations, I can give them one of the very uh, uh, cliche, cheesy tourist experiences for a day because they probably won't have done it. They will have done all these other um, special experiences that everybody finds in the city. And, 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 and the mainstream tourist stuff is still fantastic. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I know uh, we're sitting in Jumeirah today, but if you look at the waterfall, Park Jumeirah has or Atlantis, um, you know, there's no family uh, tourists that should miss that because they are the best in the world. Um, so, so I think we're very lucky on the, on that side of things. And um, and and for for those of us who, um, who 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 don't like commuting, it's it's great because we don't have to leave our square mile. Right. And so, um, um, one of the I guess the plans that you're trying to figure out with the with the 20 minute city is walkability, and a lot of cities are thinking about walkability. Um, how do you try and balance that? I guess with the weather as well. Obviously, weather uh, it's a it's a it's a part of the city, um, part of this region as well. So, uh, is walkability as you're thinking about commerce, you're thinking about tourism, an important part for you? No, definitely. I mean, look, you know, we, we, we uh, you know, His Highness the Crown Prince, His Highness Shah Hamdan, you know, is very, very, um, uh, um, you know, interested in wellness. And we've spent a lot of time over the last 10 years really looking at how to improve the wellness of a city. And you may, those of you who attended the city briefing earlier would have seen that we had uh, – our, our Dubai Fitness Challenge, which is a 30 yeah, days, right. which just passed 2.2 million participants, and um, you know all all, um, all 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 sort of international rankings and measures and everything now show that Dubai over the last six years has shifted to become, if not the top, one of the top active cities in the world mm -hmm. in terms of people, in terms of movement, um, in terms of fitness levels, and uh, you know the government has made a very concerted effort to build the necessary infrastructure needed. So if you take the example you gave earlier, which was the cycling tracks, um, you know, they've made sure that, you know, on a weekend uh, in many communities now or many areas, many of these urban centers, you don't really need to use your car because you could use your, your, your bike to get everywhere. Um, you know, when it comes to um, the, the, the summer, um, you know, of course, you need to choose the right time of day to, to go for your exercise. But at the same time, you know, we don't have schools in the summer. Uh, the, so therefore, the different rush hours is slightly less congestion. So, um, you know, it, it, it works out well. Also, you know, keep in mind that there are large areas which are air conditioned through district cooling. Right. Um, you know, keep in mind that, you know, all of our power comes from solar and gas. So it's very clean. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of the urban design is done in a way, um, you know, to use natural shading and other things to bring down temperatures. So you see a lot of these big districts today, um, you know, it's very, it's very different than being sort of out in the sun. Uh, and and uh, we see more and more tourists, uh, you know, obviously benefiting from that. Uh, so you mentioned um, 
at least a version of sustainability. And obviously, sustainability has become certainly one of the biggest topics that we cover at Skift in the, in the travel industry. Um, as you're looking at sustainability and, 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 and becoming, I guess, less um, carbon positive to more carbon neutral uh, as, a, as a city, um, how are you thinking about sustainability, particularly from a travel point of view? And, and what is your role to help the private sector uh, become a lot more sustainable? So, so I think there's a number of layers. The first layer is, you know, the country's commitment to carbon neutral by 2050, right? That's the first, the first part. The second, the second part is, I would say, is a challenge we all have because it's, there's a big debate on from, a, you know, from, a, from the perspective of supply, right. you know, what will be possible by 2030? You know, are there enough electric cars going to be built given the supply chain by 2030 for all to be electric? You know, mm -hmm. we, we've done our calculations and, you know, uh, Dubai is definitely going to stay at the forefront. The numbers today, I, I'm not sure what's announced or not announced. So I, I won't mention the exact numbers by 2030, but you will see from, uh, from a transportation perspective, public and private transportation perspective, you will also see from, um, you know, uh, the infrastructure needed, um, you know, for, the, for, 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 for that put in place and, and take it very, very seriously. And we will be at the forefront of this globally. The other thing um, is we work extremely closely with specifically the hotels and the tourism sector to really ensure that we have uh, a carbon calculator, which is, you know, all of them have, which is linked to them, linked to the, um, the, uh, the Electricity and Water Authority to really look at how uh, all the initiatives which are being put in place, um, uh, you know, with, with, with the new technologies coming out and everything else can be measured and we can ensure that, um, you know, the, 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 all the improvements um, from an environmental perspective and a carbon footprint are, are sort of tracked and recorded. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in addition to that, um, you know, we, we're putting layer upon layer of regulation to push everybody in the same direction. Okay. So, you know, things from the use of, uh, of single plastic, things from, you know, plastic bags, single use of bottles. We've just had an initiative which has gone very well, which is called Dubai Can. Uh, playing on words where, um, you know, so far 50 corporates have sponsored um, um, uh, water filtration systems across the city in public tourist areas so tourists can fill their bottle. Many of the hotels, uh, including the ones we're in, have also gone the same route and they've changed the whole system and put in, you know, systems themselves. Right. We're definitely at the forefront globally of this. Uh, yeah, maybe there's a few small islands somewhere that have, that have, done, have done it ahead of us, but in terms of scale, we're definitely at the forefront of this, and uh, you know, on um, you know, with COP twenty eight next year, right. which we're holding at the Expo site, you know, this topic, you know, is is you know, I, you know, and for those of you who don't know uh, the way COP works, is the file comes to the country when we hold the event, so we get the file at the event next November or December now, November, December, and then we have the file for a year. So I can see, you know, if we were speaking, hopefully at your next event here or the one after, um, you know, you'll be seeing, um, uh, you know, a lot more coming out in the next 12 months and the 12 months after that because of the engagement on this very uh, important topic. Needless to say, um, you know, from a, from a team perspective, it's definitely uh, um, the, the easiest topic to get everyone passionate about. Mm -hmm. So it's going to move the fastest um thank you for that one of the one of the things that dubai i was actually uh, i think you recently appointed a head of ai for the for dubai crypto i think you are in charge of um crypto as well sorry about that whatever's happening in the market um there's a method to this madness which is there's a reason why you are on top of these new things like people assume you do this because it's oh it's the it's the latest thing, but Dubai has a has a thinking behind why we should have a have a crypto policy before anybody else has, why we should have a head of AI before anybody else has at the top level, so that they permeate through. And then you know there as I said, there's a method to the madness. So what is that method to the madness as you're thinking about? Look, I think uh, in the absence of regulation, uh, you do have madness, right? And I think what we've seen in the crypto world is evidence of that. So what we saw, um, uh, you know, quite early on is that uh, virtual assets and uh, blockchain and Web3 as an industry as a whole, it's not, you know, crypto, uh, cryptocurrency and Dogecoins. It's, it's a lot more beyond that. Mm 
and as you look at the way the deep tech is evolving and as the you know and and whether it's going to take one year two years or five years um you know what was important is that we as a as, as a government and as a regulator work extremely closely both with other regulators but also with this the industry to ensure that this does not remain a gray area because if it's a gray area it's risky for aml it's risky for kyc it's risky for many other things and also consumers can't be protected because there's no regulation around that and you've seen that around the world right. um you know we 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 definitely um uh, need to ensure that um in any new industry the limit of the progress of the industry and the innovation cannot be the limit of our understanding as a regulator or as a government we have to find a way to work with the sector um and and you know the tourism sector is evidence of that you know we have um you know and i'm, I'm looking at uh, bukhalifa in the front row we have hotels working with him on a digital solutions for id for everything else which mm -hmm. is you know uh, which is groundbreaking way ahead of anywhere else and you know if we didn't um embrace what the the innovators in the private sector and uh you know academia wanted to do and we didn't encourage that the city would not move as fast as it's moving and that is is at every level um uh, you 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 mentioned um uh you know virtual assets uh when it comes to all the other sectors you know ai um and and uh, and uh, you know biotech and everything else you know you need to ensure that the the, the sectors which are going to have a big influence of the future you have the right leadership in place and our minister of ai who's also leading our digital chamber of commerce you know is really making sure that him and his team who have the knowledge in this space and have the experience in this space are able to interact with the leaders in this space from around the world to ensure the readiness of us as a country and as a city uh to really not only um uh you know manage through it but also to ensure that we grow new industry sectors and when it comes to, we circle back to tourism again to your original question you know we we see um from the events industry from the um business travel generally you know these new industries are really driving uh, a lot of a lot of travel and um you know especially as they grow and they're in their nandison stage and people need to learn um if you is attracting startups a big part of your thought process, like startups to come here, startups to, uh, to um, travel startups, for instance, to be based and create travel startups here. You have ecosystem, you have people, uh, the large companies that can, that they can experiment their new services with. So how much is, um, I guess, travel startups and startups themselves? Yeah, so, so look, look, in terms of startups, I would say, you know, we, 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 we definitely, you know, one of the top, if not the top, growing hub for startups. And startups come here in two ways, either as a startup starting up, or they're imported once companies reach sort of series B or C financing, and they need to attract the right international talent, and they need to have the right domicile and everything. We see a lot being attracted here from a much wider region. Um, when it comes to travel tech, you know, we have also set in place an accelerator along with Emirates Airline um, and we have Interlac program um, and we have other partners who are, who are also involved with that. Because what we realized is that the, the startups in the travel tech space, it's not usually, you know, they come with obviously amazing talent and usually the funding is not the issue either. Mm. Uh, usually what they want is they want, you know, to be networked into the industry sector. And I have to really thank the, the sector in Dubai because they're always really, really proactive when it comes to working with startups on new use cases, uh, working with startups to try to see, um, uh, you know, how, um, um, you know, how successful it could be. And we've, we've seen even, you know, many of the bigger players end up buying stakes in those startups and making them a main uh, part of the business. And I think that innovation, um, uh, in travel and travel tech has really helped us as a city um, and, and has, has managed to, to help us attract some of the best minds here. Um, we're we're um, closing in on time. Uh, one of the things that, that Dubai does very well is, is obviously the collaboration between the private and the public sector, which I think is envy of, of many cities around the world. Um, as you think about this moment uh, for the larger region, UAE as well as Middle East, we were talking a little bit before um, we went to the stage. Um, 
what in your, I mean, does it give you hope that this is the exact moment with all the stuff that's happening in this region? I talked about this in the panel before as well. This is Middle East's moment. In many ways, it feels like it. Does it feel like it to you with all that's happening, the opening and, and the world's perception changing as well? Look, I think the way I would look at it as follows is, you know, we're sitting today in a region which is experiencing a great deal of growth. Um, and if you look, for example, uh, not just at the UAE, but if I take some of the larger economies around, if you look at India and how it's uh, fed and, and how the, you know, produ producing almost a unicorn a week um, or, uh, and, and, and the type of policies and the type of uh, forward thinking there. If you look at the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and, um, you know, the, the amazing progress they've made on their future plans and, and where they're going. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, our other neighbors, if you look even in Africa um, and you look at many of the countries that have really turned a corner in terms of governance, in terms of growth, you know, there's something common and, 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 and in, a, in, a, in a very wide geographic region with a young population um, and you see people, you, know, you see people striving to uh, grow their economies and uh, increase the level of education, increase the level of uh, te tech talent, and everything else. Um, I see only positive. You know, I don't believe. Uh, you know, even to, we, we in Dubai don't believe even to, to a small extent that it's a zero sum game. Uh, we believe that this, uh, you know, growth regionally will will definitely attract a lot more from around the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, 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 you know, obviously sad to say all that uh, positive momentum is in the context of other geographies and other areas becoming more inward looking outside of this region right. and maybe not, not necessarily following some of the successful policies they had in the past. And that's also, you know, that, that's where I, you know, I say to my team, you know, you're doing very well, but there's a push factor as well coming from other places that right. aren't. And I think that there's a lot of push factor pushing a lot of business to the Middle East and, and the wider region. You know, I, I include the Indian subcontinent, Africa, um, you know, Southern Europe, CIS and, and Turkey. But I, I think that we're in, a, we're in a great period of time and the next 10 years um, definitely is an opportunity for everyone here. And I think that... Um, you know, you can see so many people in this room from the region, and I think if we continue to work together, uh, we're going to be in a we're going to be in a very strong position. I think uh, by 2030 and beyond. What's the most exciting thing that keeps you up at night? It has to be exciting, though. Let's close with that. I mean, look, thank God, uh, you know, we live in a city that uh, that it's not work that keeps me up at night. Uh, usually, it's. Uh, it's um, you know it's 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 been the World Cup these days, which we've been right. uh, thoroughly enjoying, and I have to t I have to thank Qatar for putting it on here for us because we've uh, we it's, it's changed all of us. We're all jet lagged, um, <laughs> and uh, you know I've um, I, I've also had the, pr the the pleasure of going to see a match in the in the early stages, and the uh, the organisation was su superb. So um, so I think I think all of us, if you ask anyone at this time in Dubai, they'll be lying if they don't have the same answer as me because everybody's really um, uh, enjoyed this uh, and, and you know we're all disappointed that Sunday it's over <laughs> yeah well okay well thank, thank you, you so again much. thank you for your time thank appreciate you. it